everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. It's uh, time to paint some more birds today and uh, here I have my preliminary sketch which I have done using a Conte pencil or a charcoal pencil or a carbon pencil, anything that's really soft and lovely. This is just like drawing with charcoal so it's ideal. I'll put uh, a link in the description below for that particular little um, piece of uh, equipment. Um, for what I've done is I've sketched out my design and then because I don't have a light box yet but I am going to get one, I've used the door and the glass door to uh, do a tracing and then I'm going to actually, what I've done is I've just done a dot to dot as you can see here. I've just basically transferred this sketch which I was happy with, that was a straight from the top of my head and it turned out fine so I'm happy with that. We've got a bird table with a bird house, just a decorative thing really, nobody would nest in there but that doesn't matter. Surrounded by a bunch of little birds there so I transferred that using the dot to dot method here and now what I'm going to do is come in with my pen and I'm going to do an ink outline which I'll do for you right now and then after that I'm going to use the Viviva colour sheets and probably a water brush to, um, to colour that in, make it into a nice bright painting. So let's get started with that. So I'm using um, some Indian ink here to do the drawing with and I'll just put the lid out of the way on my palette there and I'm going to use a um, glass pen, a glass um, drawing pen and I'll put both of these items in the description below um, under the video. I started using this the other day and there's been a lot of interest in it too so I thought we would carry on with that a little bit. Um, it's really nice to draw with. I haven't been able to find one exactly like this on Amazon or anywhere else at the moment and I can't for the life of me remember where I bought it. Um, but you can buy something similar and they're not expensive so it's something to indulge yourself in really if you um, if you feel like giving it a try. I think it's a, a really um, cool thing to have and definitely better, more creative than drawing with the pigment liners, which are good. They have their, um, the Stettler ones, for example, they have their place, but um, this is a different experience altogether. You get much more, um, I don't know, it's, I don't, it's more feeling in it, I think. So I'm not trying to do straight lines. In fact, if anything, I want wobbly ones. So I'm going to let my hand shake. I think I might have had too much caffeine today. And I'm just going to basically outline parts of the, um, the drawing. Rather than going over it in pencil, which I'll then have to rub off, I'm just going to go over it in ink. And we've got, uh, so we've got a, a kind of table in front of the, the bird um, box there, which is, as I say, no one would seriously expect this is just out of my imagination. Nobody would expect any bird to nest in that, but um, it looks quite, uh, what's the word? Um, cute. So there's the stand holding it up. And then I'd, I haven't even run out of ink yet, look. That's amazing, isn't it? And then I decided I would, um, put a little branch in just behind the bird table so we're just going to drop in the outline of a twiggy branch there and the birds will be sitting on those branches let's hope this works and then we have another one coming up here problem when you start to do things in ink you start to to worry and the other day I 
um, put a line in completely and utterly the wrong place on a, on a capsicum pepper I was trying to um, draw. Huh. And then that gave me a nice problem, but never mind. It was okay in the end. So now we're going to just do some outlines for the little birdies. And um, if they go a bit wrong, it doesn't matter because you know what, they look super cute when they are wrong, it doesn't matter. Sometimes the wrongest ones are the bestest ones, you know. Just remember to put the eyes really close to the nose, to the beak. And then you get a kind of cute look. Don't forget their tails. Scratchy lines, nice scratchy lines is what you need. Um, going to use the uh, Aviva colors for this because they are nice and bright. And um, they'll give us a nice uh, cheerful look. Might make this one a robin. Robins often kind of present themselves as being pretty much a kind of little ball, don't they? Not sure where his legs are going. We'll ignore that for the minute. This one I'm going to turn around and make him face the other way, I think. one's coming in, flying in. Looks like a small jet. Not very good at drawing flying birds, but the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. And uh, that's a fact. And one day I'll be good at it too. The thing is, I've been doing this now for I don't know how long, decades, and I still don't like what I do. So don't, don't be downhearted if you've been doing it for a week or a couple of days and you can't do what you like. I think I need another one over here. Uh, maybe one kind of hanging off the side here. Maybe like a, a blue tip might. Okay, so that's that's that, and I'll just rinse off my brush, my brush, my. Uh, my pen and uh, stick that back safely there and then I need to rub out the, um, the lines. Hopefully it's dry. Always a good idea to put the lid back on your bottle. Um, while I'm doing this, I'll just take the opportunity to thank everybody for their wonderful support and point out that we have passed 10,000 subscribers just uh, day before yesterday. We've got 10,500 now, I think, um, which is absolutely fantastic and amazing and phenomenal, and I would never have believed it possible, um, but it is possible. And anyone else who's thinking of starting a YouTube channel, if you're prepared to work hard, um, 
you can do it. You can succeed. If you don't work hard, if you don't put up a video every day, you probably take ages to get there, but you still would in the end. But I am not young enough to be able to wait forever. So we decided we would go hell bent for leather, so to speak. Trust in God, call on our angels, you and uh, as well, and go. Go bonkers and it's worked so far, so good. So sign up everybody. Join our channel membership if you if you want, and then you can um, you'll get extra perks like emojis and icons and special membership of the special private members YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, no, um, what do you call it? Channel. Facebook, Facebook group, that's it. Right, I think that'll do. Now, where's my water brush is here. Let's put this away safely. And uh, like I said, I'm going to use the, um, Viviva sheets, which I have massacred. I'm sure the people who design these things would be absolutely horrified if they saw what I'm doing. But that's what I'm doing. I've got them cut up and I put them onto a piece of glass like that. And I can then go, go to them. more easily than when they were in their little booklet. <coughs> I probably need a little bit of a palette to mix the colours on, but we don't need very much. So let's go for, um, oh, and I do need a piece of paper to test, um, don't I? So we we'll put that there. Okay, so let's, start by painting the house and we need brown really I suppose I need to just find my brown which is somewhere around here that's black there we are brown put some shadow in the shadowy places You can hear a sort of rumbling in the distance. It's my cat purring. He purrs himself to sleep, he's so funny. He's lying in his bed, purring. He's a very happy little push, a little pushy cat. I'm working on um, Clairefontaine Etival paper which is 100% cellulose, very um, friendly to people who are learning to paint. Very um, amenable, not too demanding. I'm gonna put a little bit of green in there to make that brown a little bit duller for the underneath there. <clears throat> and a little bit more for the Table. A little bit more still to make it a bit darker around that side. A little bit more still for this side here. And then put some magenta with that I'll get a sort of greyish kind of colour so just to give it a bit of variety across there. Okay so then our twiggy twig twig um, we might want to do that in some kind of dark brown too so I've mixed black with orange make nice brown and then I'll put a little bit more blue in there for this one 
so it's a slightly greener tone. And now for the birds. So let's look for some yellows. We have dusk orange here, which um, might be quite nice for some of the birds. So we'll pop that in. And then um, let's make his back brown. And um, I'm not going to do anything very accurate here. We're just going to make them fun. So this one will come in with some lemon yellow, then maybe some orange, which would drop in at the top. And then maybe, oh, that's green. I don't know if I want green, not yet. We'll work on green later. And then the brown here. And make his tail brown. And uh, the one in front here, uh, I think he ought to be blue. What do you think? Good. Oh no, I said hey, I said that was going to no. It can't be a robin because the the red won't work. So it'll have to be a bluebird. So we pop the blue in all over him, and then maybe we'll add some some darker blue on the top. And the tail and maybe some Persian blue or something like that to give some contrast. Okay and then let's do uh, what have we got? We've got we want a pink so magenta we could put on this one that's magenta To dull that down a little bit, make it into a sort of pinkish brown, add some green. Um, this was going to be a blue tip, so we'll come with blue again here but light and what's the color of the black back of a blue tit is kind of blackish isn't it so we want and the front um let's see i think they look good when they're basically they start with yellow and then we drop in some orange. We could try some saffron on this one. And uh, saffron and black again is going to make a sort of brown. So that's that's okay. Um, we go saffron. Again over here, shall we pop in some green? Like that. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do this one. No, this one. We'll do this one green. With how about a nice dark blue back area there? That looks quite nice. And then um, how about we make this one the robin? So we'll go for vermilion for the chest. There we go. And then a nice dark brown for his back, which is black with vermilion. Black and vermilion. There we are, so there's a robin. Maybe, should we make this one a robin too?
There we are, so we just need to let that dry a little bit and then we can come in with uh, the pen again and uh, put the eyes back in and just generally um, uh, focus that up a bit. And I think it's possible that it might be a good idea to put some background in. So I'm thinking of some spatter. I think that's probably the best thing. And the way I'm gonna do this spatter, um, which is different from what I've perhaps done before, I'm going to take my um, cat's tongue faux squirrel brush by Zen Art from their collection Black Tulip um, and I'll put a connection to that in the information below just in case you should wish to purchase their set of six brushes, one for every possible occasion. Very good. Very inexpensive. Now, as I'm doing this, it's the water is touching on some of the birds and some of the furniture on here. The, and we're getting a little bit of run, which is good, because that's what we want in the background. We want some spatter. So I'm going to go to my, again, the Zen Art brush. This is the rigger. And I'm going to pick up some, some dark green, first of all, I'm going to drop that in. And where the paper is wet, you get these nice kind of starbursts, and where it's still dry, you get quite sharp little dots. So that's a nice way of giving a good texture in the background without too much trouble. So you can do that, you put some in first layer, then you let that dry, then you can come in with another layer of sharp um, dots from your rigger brush. Um, now, before we go away from this, I need to darken some of this, um, uh, the, the birdhouse. So just to put the shadow in under the eaves, like that. So we'll come in with the dark brown Maybe we might mix it with a bit of black to make it even darker in places. Just give it a little bit more three-dimensionality. Make the hole dark like that. And then we might want to try to kind of indicate that it's made of wood by giving some lines a little bit like that. Soften them up. Let that dry. And then um, probably want a little bit of dark here, where we've got the shadow behind there. And down here, just to send that back a bit. Okay, and then if we wanted to, we could put uh, using um, something opaque, we could put some seeds, or oh, it doesn't have to be okay, opaque, we could just put some seeds on here, like that. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry and um, then I will come back and finish it when I do a bit more spatter, sharpen up the faces of the birds with the pen, but I can't do that until it's dry. Okay, so this is all perfectly dry now and I've just taped it down a little bit with some washi tape to um, make sure that it doesn't move. While I just put in the eyes again, which have got a little bit lost while we were painting. So just uh, popping those in again so that they can be seen. And um, my two robins there. And I think that that's okay. We might want to just do a few more scratchy lines 
in some places, perhaps to emphasize the beak a little bit. And uh, just sharpen up the beak and make it a little bit more pointy. And I'm using the Stettler pigment liner for this because it's a bit more predictable than the, um, than the uh, glass pen, which is great for random lines, as we can see, because I'm really quite pleased with the way these scratchy lines have come out. And um, so, yeah, we might put a few scribbles onto the twig just to give some texture to the bark on the twig. A little bit of shadow too underneath the birds that are sitting on there. And uh, I like the way I've got one twig which is kind of bluer on this side than this one. So you've got the cool to warm um, transition between the colors there, which is so important in making a painting come to life. If you look at any painting that you that appeals to you and you wonder why and you try to analyze why it is you like a particular painting, you might notice that most paintings that appeal to you have got one side has got a cooler area, a bluer or a colder area and the other side has got contrast. The eye responds well to that. And um, yeah, so that's something to look out for if you're ever in the mood to sort of analyze why you like this or that painting or what it is about a painting that you do that turns out quite well and you think, oh, why does that one look right and professional and um, why does that one not? Okay, so that's it. I'm not doing any more on that. Um, I'm going to leave that as far as the ink goes and then I'm just going to put in, like I said, a few more of the green um, spots and they'll come in nice and crisp because the paper is now completely dry and we don't uh, we don't get any more smudging like we did which is what we wanted we wanted those smudgy blobs there so that's it uh, maybe just a little touch of green on the back of the bird and uh, I'm gonna call that a day I'm gonna say that's finished Thank you very much for being with me today and watching me do this painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Do give it a try. There's nothing more rewarding than uh, painting little birds. And uh, thanks again to everybody for supporting the channel and uh, for making us uh, able to reach our 10,000 subscribers. And uh, we're going to go from strength to strength as we move on now. It starts to accelerate, I hope. So join the channel, take up channel membership, chip and join the Facebook group for some personal attention from me and I will try to keep on answering your queries and questions in the comments but as we get busier it starts to get a little bit harder but don't worry I'm not going to disappear still one video every day and your free download of the sketches on dianeanton.com do pop on over there um, it's getting to be quite a busy place nowadays and download your free sketches and of course your convenient bundles we've got the summer summer hedgerow bundle and the christmas bundle which um, we ask you to pay a minimal fee for saves you doing the tip jar thing too and uh, then you get them all in one go and we're going to be doing one of those a month so it'll just make it easier for you for the sake of a couple of dollars it makes it easier for you to download the latest sketches this one will be up probably tonight or tomorrow and uh, so we'll let it go now and I will see you soon. Take care everybody. Bye bye and bye bye from Arthur. Meow. Hello Arthur. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.